Hello everyone, welcome to my digital online painting class, and, thank you, and thanks again for signing up for it. You know, I gotta give you guys credit because, you know, doing these online uh, classes are actually really, they're not only intimidating, but they're also really challenging in the sense of you have to find, like, your own personal time to actually work on these assignments, and, you know, it, it totally digs into your personal life, and it's and it's really tough, but if you stick with it, you know, everything I'm going to tell you is essentially every single tool that I use. Uh, first, I'm going to make a new image, and we'll go from there. So, some very basic things we're going to go over is primarily the Photoshop interface, and some of the th other things that I add to it to enhance um, Photoshop for what I do. Um, basically, I'm an illustrator. I work in TV animation and also film animation. Uh, my background is primarily in animation, video uh, animation, video games, and TV animation. Uh, I don't really tackle it live action because my um, my aesthetics tends to be uh, geared more towards uh, animation. And so with that in mind, um, usually I'll get hired for either character designs, backgrounds, or visual development. Uh, in TV, when you do backgrounds, they got to be spot on because you got to hand them off to another person to paint. And if you're the painter, you got to make sure that you get the correct color keys for the show and and essentially what you're trying to create, uh, the mood. So first off though, let's talk a little bit about Photoshop. So this is a CS6, and um, you might see later in my recordings I'm using an, an older version of Photoshop, and those are from the previous uh, uh, videos I made for this class, but now I kind of streamlined them just a little bit more just so I can uh, make sure that uh, that you have a little bit extra time to actually work on your pieces. Before I used to require students to do a painting a week, now I'm going to stretch this out a little bit longer. That way you guys have a little bit more time to develop the piece and really soak in the information that I'm presenting to you. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit B and that's going to give us our essential uh, whoops, our essential brushes. So these are the brushes I'm going to be giving to you. And you'll probably see later on in the video, you'll see me use a whole variety of different brushes. Honestly, all those were ones I, I either downloaded or got rid of. But um, I used to have uh, a lot, I used to have a standard brushes that I always use, but my computer crashed in the sense of I was hooking up a my hard drive right next to my backup hard drive, and unfortunately it had a short and killed both hard drives. So I was incredibly brushless for a good amount of time until I just decided to go ahead and just download whatever I could find online. And this is a combination of all these brushes that I found online that have been really helpful and they really serve their purpose really well. The other thing uh, I'm going to give you also is the tool presets. So these are some of the brushes that I made and you'll see me use a sharp fine pen the most because um, that's essentially what I use a lot of just to block in stuff. Uh, there's some other variety of brushes here and some of the really nice ones are like the pencil round. So it has a really nice pencil feel. Oops. Right now I'm just hitting undo. Uh, you can see here is our background. I'm going to click here for, to make a new layer. And I'm just going to start sketching. But as you can see, this brush this brush is, uh, works really well. But I guarantee you there's like 30 other brushes out there that are pretty much um, creating the same kind of line quality and and almost texture. So overall brushes don't really matter all that much because they're all essentially going to be doing the same thing. Some might be easier to work with, some might be a little bit a little bit more challenging, but overall brushes really don't make a, a difference at all. It all depends on as uh, it all depends on you as a designer. But this one has a nice uh, pencil-y kind of feel. Uh, another thing I would sometimes use to draw is I click on my fine pen. And then I have a little tab here called brush, which you can go Windows, brush. And it's essentially this one. And um, what I do is sometimes I'll go and I'll squeeze this down, and rotate it, and it gives me a nice little edge. But you can see how this one's feels pretty pretty similar but there's just a f little bit more um, a, a difference in here but it's very minor so 
you're probably asking yourself which brush is better, which one to use. And I would say it really doesn't matter because they're essentially doing the same thing. And it just really depends what you're designing with the brush as well. So in this case, I'm just doing a really quick scribble of a kid. But you can see, like, if I was to turn either of these in, they both would have been fine. Now, if you got, like, um, if we just use my regular brush, if I just go and click it again, now you'll see it creates a very different texture or different feeling from the one that I just did. Because since I rotated it, it was giving off a different, uh, slightly different property. Now, neither one of these are bad. And uh, it just totally depends on you, on what you want to try to create. But depending on just rotating the brush just a little bit, you can start to create a very different uh, kind of feel and quality, or at least in terms of uh, in terms of line quality. So it really doesn't matter on your brushes all that much, as long as it's creating the, the strokes that you want to create. And then you can even then uh, just use both brushes. Or you can use it to emphasize things. So now we're using a variety of, of brushes. So there's like a million different things that we can do in Photoshop. And that's just some of the brushes. So I usually have it um, bound to my Wacom pen. So here's my Wacom pen. I have this button down here bind to Alt. And this button down here will be signed to B, which is the hotkey for brushes. And of course here will be the eraser. And by doing so is, by having it set up this way, I can quickly uh, hit Alt and select whatever color range I need. And then I could just hit B and this will bring up my brushes and I can choose whatever brush I need. And you can see they all have a very nice uh, texture quality to it. Now the problem is you have to be careful with the brushes because a lot of times you're going to find yourself in a position where you're going to be relying more on your brushes than you will on your draftsmanship. And you're going to see me do this a lot. But usually the way I paint is I start with an opaque kind of like an opaque character and this goes for environments too of course naturally I, I should start with the line drawing but there and then I'm going to start to and this is to lock our layers so what this is going to do is let us lock the layer and then we can start using gradation and it's only going to lock that layer. And then here we have the lasso tool. The lasso tool is basically going to just let us uh, cut right in there. It's Think of it like a masking tool. So I can start to mas mask, uh, mask things off very easily. And then here you just have a selection of different mar uh, marquee tools, polygon tools, which is going to let us, you'll see me use this a few times as well. Then I'm going to hold down shift and that's just going to continue on with my selection. So every time I click, it's not going to let go. And then since I want to paint in here, I can't because again, we have the mayor last or the mask on. So I need to take that off. And now I can paint again. Then when if I hit Control D, it automatically deselects it. So now that I have my um, basic form there, now you can take a texture brush, hit lock again, and maybe now I'm going to just start to paint like a little texture onto it. 
And essentially, this is exactly how you would treat it if you were doing a uh, traditional gouache painting. You know, if you ever look at the backgrounds from um, Sleeping Beauty, this is this is essentially the same process. I can go back here, choose my fine point. And then you could still go in here with some other brushes. Gotta make sure it's locked. And I can go back with my fine brush, fine pen. Now you can see here how I'm like, oh man, I really started to mess up. I should have put, I can't quite get it really nice and spot on. So if you know you're going to have overlaps, what you can do now is create a new layer, which is down here. And then I'm going to start to make the arm here. Now the reason why this works out so well is because I'm thinking about the, the hierarchy of my, uh, of my layers. And I hit layer mask. Choose a color, go back down, and I'm I'm creating my shadows. And I can even make them with little shoes here. So definitely coming in and having a predetermined idea of what you're gonna do with your layers is definitely gonna be the way to go. Now let's say I want to make a shadow under him, I'll make another layer. Try to look for a brush that would fit what I basically need. So if I choose this one, obviously that's not going to work at all. So I need to go in here and choose a brush that's really going to help me with that. And currently I don't see anything. So I'm going to choose a brush I think might work. A little texture there. Go to brushes, squeeze it, maybe even rotate it. But now you can see the brush is now flat. And because it's flat, I can make a little ground texture much more easier. And if I go over it again, it'll get a little bit darker because this is more of a, a brush that has um, kind of like a shape dynamics, but um, maybe a better way to describe it, it's, it's more of a, a transparency on it. So every time you build up, it's just going to keep building up more and more. Think of it like a watercolor almost. And you can see a lot of these brushes have really great texture onto it, but it's very easy to... to really abuse it. So I'm going to use it very sparingly. So now let's go ahead and go back to our lasso tool and maybe give him like a sombrero or a cowboy hat or something. Another thing we could do is we could use just a fill button. So if you click here, go to paint bucket, I'm going to make another new layer. And I'm going to make this one kind of red. Hit control D and it's gone. So another thing, another uh, very useful tool is going to be control T. And essentially what we're going to do is I'm just going to squeeze these down and this is essentially just uh, tweaking the parameters on it. But if I also right click, I get a whole selection of things as well. So I'm going to try distort. And I kind of like how that's distorting his little uh, his hat there. But you can see how it made it a little bit more blurry. So now you have to kind of go in there and erase it. But at the same time, you got to be careful. Because if you use it with a photo, it's just going to make it blurry. And it's going to be very difficult to... Um, to actually uh, use because then we just have a blurry photo. So now you can see how we got this guy here, little s very graphic kind of sombrero. Now we use the pencil tool. I'm going to 
feel like he has like a sash or something. And I can go in here and start erasing it. And now, even though I was using the pencil tool, which is mostly just used for drawing, I can go and erase into it, and now it has a different kind of quality to it. I don't care for that color, so I'm going to again hit the lock tool. Find a brush that will help me kind of fill it in, but as you can see, it's not really letting me do it now. And it's not because we have it on a different layer or anything like that, but the problem being is basically this brush now for this one is um, it's too transparent, meaning that if I take this off, you can see how you can kind of see through it a little bit. So see how these squares are coming through? But if I turn on this guy, it's completely blocked. So that's one of the, the dangers of painting or painting uh, too, maybe a little bit too loose, meaning that the opacity isn't quite there to, to maintain the quality. But I'm just going to go back to my pen tool. Go back to this guy. And start to give him a little bit of a facial hair. And start paying in some ears. But I can see quickly how just using a handful of tools you can really start to paint things and get things and get the ball rolling. So uh, essentially, I'm treating this just like gouache, and you know, with this, um, with that sash there, it's just not going to work. So I'm going to need to go back in there and try to repaint it in. This time, using a different brush. If I go in here as well, I'm not crazy about that color, so I want to change it, so I'm going to hit the, con the lock tab again. I'm like, okay, that feels a little bit better. But you can quickly see now how we're, how we're uh, able to paint things. So another thing you can do is you can hit uh, Shift, bring all these layers down, and then... Uh, hit control E which will merge them all. So now I just have it on one solid layer. So another thing we can do is go click here and then go to the dodge tool and you can see what the dodge is doing is basically lining up this character. It's uh, burning the pixels. But we don't really want that. So let's go to burn tool and what this is going to do is create like a, a natural gradation. So it's burning the pixels but burning it in such a way that's going to create it darker versus burning it to make it brighter. And another tool you'll be using a lot of is the smudge tool. So I have the guy here, you can see how he just smudged his arm, but then you can also bind it with another um, brush. So you can see how now I'm getting like a really funky kind of gradation. Zoop. And depending on how big your brush is, and how many layers and how many strokes it is, it could take a while to load. And in this case, it's just taking a while to do its uh, to do its thing. Let's see if I can cancel it. Nope. So you might get into this problem where if your brushes have too many things loaded into it, it tends to, to just go really crazy. Wow, I've not seen this in a while. I am very surprised. But, you know, that just goes to show you that some brushes are just going to behave very differently from others. And control alt z. Interesting. There we go. 
No. So as you can see, that brush basically obliterated anything I did. And it's number 965. So I would actually probably stay clear of that one just because it it doesn't seem to... Well, only when you're using the smudge tool. So you got to be mindful about what it's going to do there. But you can see how this one is kind of just destroying it right now. So some brushes will destroy it and some can maintain its integrity. So I'm going to go to something like maybe this brush where you can see now it's now this is going to get more towards what we want because now I can get a nice little gradation on his arm and then I have to go back in there and kind of erase it because you can see now how it's uh, kind of making it feel a little bit softer so the other thing we should keep in mind about let me just create a circle go ahead and fill that in So if I create another layer and I hit Alt, I'm going to click and drag onto this guy. Oops, I think I had to have him on top. So what's happening here is by hitting Alt and making sure the layer's on top and feeding down to here, it's basically saying um, it's almost like lock layers, but it's actually nice to have a, a separate layer just to do this in. So I can come in here, put in all this texture, but then take it off and I still rate maintain my um, my shape. I haven't actually used this a lot, but I saw someone else using this and I thought, boy, that's a really great technique or great tool. But, you know, there's like a million different things you can do in Photoshop and it really doesn't matter, honestly, because, you know, there's just so many different ways to paint like a rock or paint like uh, trees that, you know, whatever works for you, you know, it's probably just best to stick with it. But always keep an uh, open mind to try new things. So here, then I could take that off. And the nice thing is I can come in here and erase this and it still maintains it. And then I can use, hit my eraser tool, choose a brush, and I can start erasing into it as well. But it's erasing it with the texture quality of the brush. So which is really cool. And so these are the pretty much the main tools that you're gonna be using. Um, another one that would be useful would be Filter Liquify Tool. And essentially what Liquify Tool is going to let me do is really push the pixels around. So think of it like uh, the Smudge Tool. Only now I get to... So this is going to blow it up. I'm going to click on this one. But now I can really start to warp it. And this becomes really useful when you start making your shapes or in your environments or your characters and you just want to nudge something very gently and then you can get uh, kind of a specific shapes that way and you can see how it just leaves it transparent but if I was to lock it and go back into the liquify tool transparency for this image cannot be modified. What this is uh, essentially saying is because I'm going to be moving it around in the liquify tool, it's going to take the background with it. So you see, if I do this, now we're going to get the background. And you can see it already had a little bit of white because I accidentally hit uh, the filter tool or the liquify tool, so it repeated the, the last thing that I did. But then if I take the background off, you can see here now it's all white. And that defeats the purpose. So if you use the liquify tool, always make sure that lock layers is off. Uh, now to duplicate a layer, you can click it, drag over here to this uh, little new layer, uh, layer icon. And I'll duplicate it. So now you got two characters. And this is really handy when you're doing environments or some parts in characters where you want to duplicate it. 
The other tool will be the pen tool. So if you click on the pen, click here, and depending if you hold and drag, it can really start to warp in shape. And now that you got this, now if you click on your paths tool, you'll see it makes us uh, basically the shape. But then if I click on these marching ants, go to my layers, create a new layer, and I could discard this because I don't need it anymore. And then hit Control D, and now I have a pen tool that basically made a big shape. And now within that shape, I can also click on my tool presets, and it'll give me a whole selection of uh, of eraser tools. I can just come in here and start erasing this. And come in here. Create a new layer. And essentially, you know, you're basically making another character with shapes, but you're designing your their shapes from uh you're basically just designing their shapes and the internal uh silhouettes is basically what I'm working on right now but I always found uh Working with your shapes first has always been a very uh, a very good technique because you're basically forced to make decisions about like how this character should be looking based entirely on its shape. So think of it like your friends. Like you know exactly if you were just to see the silhouette of your friends, you would know exactly what they look like. You would be able to tell them from really far away. So because of that, you know, working from your shape bases definitely uh it's a pretty it's a pretty good approach and there's really just a handful of tools that I use but I know people that you know they know every single hotkey they used every single kind of um technique known to man but you know honestly honestly it doesn't truly matter all that much because there's so many different ways to get to where you want to go in Photoshop. So some other things I want to show you guys Oops. is a little thing. So I have this program here Unfortunately, Magic Picker isn't going to work because I enter in my all my stuff and it still gives me issues. But I got this other one here called uh, Colors, and it's actually really, really useful. So essentially, whatever I choose here, it's going to be giving it to me. The default in Photoshop is this, and you have to slide up here if you want to make it warmer, if you want to make it cooler, move here. And if you want it to be more saturated, you move it here, but if you want less, you move it there. I actually prefer this because seeing a triangle, it's um, a little bit easier for for me to digest. And plus, if I need um, complementary colors, it can give me a very quick read on what those are. And it goes into several different other color modes.